Yo, welcome to another goddamn video on my goddamn channel. So I'm just gonna, you know, give you guys some tips because I've been here, I've been, you know, I've been getting some questions about competing. So, you know, if guys are interested in competing, then I'm probably gonna be a great person to speak to you because obviously I just come off a contest prep. Tip number one, build muscle, people. There's no reason why you need to rush into the stage, yeah? Build the muscle that you need to actually be competitive on stage. You know, if you come third, fourth, second, third, and you want first place, then, you know, make sure you're doing everything in your power to make sure that you're getting that, third pla that first place. You know, don't just expect to come out here and win because you're competing. That's ridiculous, you know? Be competitive in your class. Make sure that you build your physique for your class, of course. So if you're a men's physique uh, competitor, make sure you get that wide upper body and narrow waist. Classic physique, same thing. But, you know, get them legs nice and thick. Um, Bodybuilding, obviously just build a shit ton of muscle and out muscle everyone else, you know what I mean? Like, don't come onto the stage hoping that you're just gonna get a pass or a blige because you've competed and because you've dieted. You know, you guys need to put in that work, especially in the off season. Make sure you build all the muscle tissue that you can before you get onto that diet phase. It's all well and good dieting down and getting nice and shredded, but if you ain't got the muscularity to match it, you're gonna get smoked, son. Tip number two when it comes to competing on stage. Practice makes perfect. You want to practice what you're going to be doing on stage every day. I'm talking posing practice, practice looking at yourself in the mirror, taking a whole bunch of pictures. If you follow um, Frank Zane, Frank Zane had a very good podcast recently talking about how he used to take pictures over pictures after pictures after pictures after pictures. After pictures. And that way he knew exactly what he looked like on stage. And that's what you guys need to make sure. You guys need to make sure you look, you know exactly how you look on stage. That way when you are on stage and you're hitting a certain pose, you know exactly how you look in that pose. So when you see somebody else in that pose, then you just know, okay, well, I know exactly what I'm comparing myself against. And also that's another thing. You have to compare yourself, but don't let your comparison rule you. That's one thing that I kept on doing Uh on my own, I would find the competitor in classic and be like, oh crap, he looks sick. I wouldn't even look at myself compared to them. I'll just look at what they look like, isolated, and then just be like, yo, this guy looks sick. I'm, I'm, I'm shitting myself. And that is also gonna be a negative thing. You need to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what your competition looks like. But then on top of that, you have to have a clear understanding of what you look like. And in comparison, look at those two looks. You know, if that guy, okay, that guy smokes me on the back, but I smoke him at the front, all right, cool, work on your back. Oh, that guy smokes me at the legs, but I smoke him up top, all right, cool, work on your legs. Make sure that you do everything in your power to make sure that you have the best position possible to make sure that you catch them Ws. I guess those are two tips, so. Let's go on to tip number four. Tip number four is stop telling people to compete. People, please. Look, yeah. Look, yeah. Competing is hard. Hard. Super hard. Hot. If you think that you're going to come onto stage and just smoke everyone or you're going to tell your friend, look, bro, like you train in the gym, go compete on stage, you're going to get followers. No, listen, the mental game that you have to play to actually get to that level of shreddedness, you have to be ready for it mentally. And most people aren't. So stop pushing your friends into competing on stage unless that's something that they really want. You know, you don't want to put your friend into a position where they are on stage, looking crappy, doing bad after dieting down couldn't really finish the diet, looked half dieted, half fat, and now they've lost and you're looking at you like, you told me I should compete. Or even worse, they're hating their life, they've dieted down, they've gone to that mental place, they've been able to do it, finish the, the prep, and they're just like, yo, I hate this shit. This is something that you have to do out of love because you ain't gonna get paid very much, I'll tell you that, for free. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not profitable. 
Don't be doing this for clout. You ain't going to just grow Instagram from zero to a thousand or a hundred thousand followers because you've competed on stage. There's a whole bunch of competitors, good competitors that have, you know, zero followers and shit competitors that have hundreds of thousands. So, um, yeah, just don't do it for clout. Don't do it for clicks and don't do it because your friend told you. Tip number five, enjoy the process. Enjoy every minute of it. If you come on to stage and you are just, you know, you just want the finished product, you just want to get off the stage and go eat some donuts and eat some muffins and stuff, and you you don't, you don't care about the result, you just want to eat and drink, then I ain't going to lie to you, you're in the wrong goddamn sport because you're going to be having to do this dieting thing a lot of times and maybe a lot of times back to back. So if the last thing you want to do is continue this prep, I would recommend that you don't prep. Anyway, guys, this is not saying that you shouldn't do it because there are so many things that you can learn and grow from. And that is what I want to get into now. So things that I learned being on prep. One, I learned exactly where my mental state can go to. I, know, I learned exactly how far and how hard I can push myself. Uh, for a goal that I particularly want. I know that I can get up, get it done, come home, and then get the rest of the stuff that I need to get done, done. You know, I can make multiple videos a week while still posting on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, sorry. I know I can make multiple YouTube videos a week while still posting on Instagram and TikTok every day. And, you know, not stress me out. So, you know, make sure that you... So, like, yeah, so, like... That's one good thing. You learn how to push your... Uh, you learn exactly how far you can push your mental game into making these goddamn mental gains. Yeah. Number two thing that I learned from competing. You are going to feel like people are not supporting you and that is all right. What I mean by that is a lot of people show support in ways that you might not feel is the best way that you want to feel that support. You might want people to chair your corner every single minute and every single day, like every post, comment every post, all of that good stuff, but it's just not going to be the case. But when it's all said and done, you'll be surprised who was watching, who was waiting for you to succeed. And to be fair, to who was waiting to see you lose. And those people that were waiting to see you lose, probably kicking themselves when they see that done. People that see you, uh, want to see you win, probably cheering harder than you when you got down, come off that stage. So remember that people are going to support in ways that don't necessarily suit you, but they are still supporting you. The first thing I learned is consistency brings results. Now, this doesn't mean that it brings the results you want. doesn't mean that it brings the results when you want them. It doesn't mean that it brings the results how you want them, but it does bring the results that you want eventually one day. Um, the best line that I ever heard is be uh, patient, but not complacent. And shouts out to Connor. If you're watching this, Connor, I got that from you when we was chaining and got them arms, making them got them bang as your heels me. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, um, yeah. So be patient, but not complacent. So work hard. Your time will come, people. Make sure that you keep on doing everything and anything in your power to make sure that you get to your goals, but be patient because they're not going to come straight away. Your goals aren't going to happen, you know, in five seconds or, you know, you're not going to be consistent for a month and then people are going to be like, wow, this guy's consistent for a month. Time to follow him. He's got 100k followers. No, you're going to have to be consistent for a month and just really, and in that month you, of you being consistent, you're going to see nothing. You got, you're going to be consistent for two months and see nothing, three months and see nothing. But that's when you get to the end goal and then you see the truth. You know, I know, for example, I'll use it as an example, consistency in cardio. So if you're consistent with your cardio and your diet, you know, every day you wake up, you hit your fasted cardio, your cardio, boom. Every day you, boom, 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 boom. You hit everything that you need to do. Then as soon as, and eventually you start to get leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner. And it's exactly the same when you're consistent with anything else in your life. You get better at it. You become more, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily become easy because, you know, as the you start to get tested and tempted. But when you get to the end goal, that's when you know that you worked your ass off. Anyway, people, 
Thank you for paying attention. Hopefully I wasn't rambling too much. I'm not used to sitting down in front of the camera like this. I prefer to vlog. But with that being said, remember to like, subscribe, and all that good shit, man. Thank you for watching and peace.